So because we're quite lazy, um, we get a box delivered every week that has all the ingredients in it and the recipes to cook three meals. And it's great. Uh, it's really expensive though. Um, you probably, there, there's a fair few versions of this thing. You've probably heard of at least one of them. But yeah, they, they're great. They make you eat healthier. Um, but because I'm a big nerd, I want to try to avoid paying the, uh, the premium with technology. Um, so I've had a poke around at a few different sorts of meal planners slash recipe managers slash grocery shopping list thingamabobs. Um, I found a few. Um, recipe Sage is one, Merely, Tandoor Recipes, and Open Eats. There's a few other uh, closed source ones, but um, of all the ones I've looked at, Grossy appears to tick the most boxes. It's pretty straightforward to self-host. There's a Docker container. And um, it's got all the features, most of the features that um, I need. So the stuff I was looking for was a, a good interface for entering recipes, um, meal planning, so choosing what recipes you want to cook on a given day, um, like given, in a given week, um, putting all the recipe ingredients into a shopping list, um, being able to order the shopping list based on where the produce is in the supermarket so you can walk a consistent path through the market and the shopping list is ordered by that. I did mention that I was a big nerd. Um, and it would be nice if it tracked stuff that we had in stock so we didn't have to like it doesn't doesn't add olive oil to the shopping list every time we need to cook something which needs olive oil which is almost everything. So grocery um, I've set up uh, lots of stuff that we need on a regular basis, lots of um, products and where they are in the house, um, the shops we go to. It starts out with a bafflingly bare bones quantity units table, like it's got pack and piece. I've had to add tables, tablespoon, teaspoon. You can add conversions between each of these units, which is pretty handy. And then you set up the aisles. These, these are arbitrary text. You can type whatever you like in here. Um, but I've set up one, two, three, four, and I've assigned the products to each aisle. So aisle one at my local Aldi has these ingredients in it. I haven't gone so far as to order things as to where they appear in the aisle, but at least, you know, aisle one is all grouped together on the on the list. And it's got a bunch of user configurable stuff. Um, and I've plugged in a couple of the recipes. So this is my patented Anzac Wiki recipe, extremely reliable, extremely delicious. And a couple of these um, I've pinched from the meal box deliveries that we get. And um, so you can go into here and say, put missing products on my shopping list. And it goes, do do do. You need to add these things to your shopping list. Uh, and then you say yes, and you go to your shopping list. And it's got all the things you need to cook that thing that you don't already have. And then once you've done your, cook, done your shopping, you go add all list items to stock. And done. And then in your stock overview, the things you bought show up here. I don't know why it hasn't actually done that. I've missed something. Anywho. Um, yeah, it appears we haven't actually bought them yet. Um, so that's the general idea. Um, <coughs> but there's still a lot of cases in which you want to manually add something to the shopping list. You know, I'm not going to be bothered checking that we still have enough cereal or milk or, you know, things that you use all the time, bananas apples. Um, so enter this widget. So this is um, an M5 stack core 2. This top part here, the white part, and the base is a faces base. And it's got a little I2C keyboard on the bottom. Um, so this thing costs $100 um, shipped from China, $100 Australian shipped from China. It's got all the usual trimmings. This box here has got a it's got a relatively nice LCD screen on top. Uh, it is a touch screen, and the keyboard is functional. It's the best you could say about it. But it's got an ITC connection from here to here. This thing has got every sensor known to man, um, and it's got a bunch of broken out ITC ports and speed ports, and you know lots of other cool stuff. It's got magnets in the back so you can stick to things. But these. This mob make um, a bunch of nifty prototyping hardware, like that widget, and some other bits and bobs. 
but um, they're relatively cheap and the brain inside is an ESP32 and uh, it's got Wi-Fi as well obviously so it's talking to Grossi and it is able to pull the list of products that we have configured in the database and display it on the screen here and you can search through it I need some butter and so it filters it down oh, yeah butter or cooking butter so you hit butter and you hit add and that adds it to the shopping list and then yeah this is the um so I, I really can't expect Michelle to uh, my wife to use the computer interface she will she will have none of it but if I stick this in the fridge I think there's a decent chance that um, it'll actually get used but yeah that's what I'm working on at the moment um, so the software for these things is pretty garbage to be honest um, they really want you to use their closed source uh, M5 UE or something UE flow um, but it is just uh, it's running MicroPython under the hood. Unfortunately, it's running a custom build of MicroPython. You can build from scratch to run these things, but then you have to futz about trying to find all the right drivers and such, um, which is no fun. Um, so I was playing around with their um, UE flow, like a drag and drop, what you see is what you get kind of thing, and it generates Python and MicroPython out of that. And I wanted to do something that it didn't expose via the interface. I had a bit of a dig around, and apparently it's just running LVGL, which is an open source um, GUI composition library under the hood. So I scrapped all the M5 garbage, and um, now I'm calling the underlying system calls directly, underlying API. That works really well. And so you can do all the usual stuff like snap, snap to things, align to size, set the radiuses on all the elements, and all that stuff, assign callbacks. Um, so yeah, I'm relatively impressed with this, and for 100 bucks, you know, it's got a battery built in. The actual top module came with another battery, and oh, look at that, this is the best part. So it's got all the pinouts on the back, and all the um, addresses for all the internal speed buses, and all the um, peripherals that are attached to those buses. So you see there's quite a lot on here. It's got a micro SD card, a microphone, speaker, accelerometer, USB-C port, blah, 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 blah. Everything, everything you could really want. Um, and it's really not that expensive. Um, but yeah, that's my present project. So the goal is to replace our paper shopping list, which is, you know, in all fairness, a remarkably practical thing. Just a piece of paper and a pencil stuck to the fridge. But I'm going to make it complicated with technology so we can stop paying the premium for our delivered recipe boxes. Anything to avoid actually having to think about what I want to cook this week. Okay, bye-bye.